1763 um, officer's hanger is what it's called, and it is very simple, elegant, beautiful design. This is also known as a cutlass. So um, this blade is is a um, slashing weapon. It's not so much a stabbing weapon. The blades, uh, the point is curved, so much more of one of these. It was considered very graceful to fight this way. It was considered very honorable to fight that way. So officers would carry these. No one else would really. Um, certain in the British Army and and both Americans and British did carry these. But in the British Army, you would have some units that would carry them and some that wouldn't. It was kind of a mix and match. This is the basic movement of this weapon. Um, the handguard here protects my hand from getting broken or cut off, basically. So again, very eloquent, very quick, liquid moves, and it's it's uh, they're beautiful weapons to say the least. This is called an infantry saber. So uh, officers would carry it, but this is an infantry saber. Now, um, if you were British and you were a Highlander, you would carry one of these babies. This is a Highlander broadsword. It was originally designed to kill wild boar. It's a fun fact about it. So Highlanders, these big, beefy Scottish dudes in kilts would carry these things and they were known to actually peg their enemy to a tree and leave them with the uh, with the sword in there. It's kind of a warning of don't don't mess with me. Um, and if you look closely here you can see these two grooves that go down the blade. Those are for bloodletting, right? That, well, yes. These are called bloodlines. And the reason for them, a straight sword like that, because it's carved, I won't have the problem, but a straight blade with no blood grooves, I will stick in and I won't be able to get it out because the pressure will close around it and it'll pressurize. Now the blood grooves allow the blood to leak out, allow me to get some oxygen in there so I can stab, pull out, decapitate. Very simple, you know, or, or whatever. And they would decapitate with these. So these are the two most uh, common examples of what you'd see. Um, by the revolution, you had a lot less, unfortunately, you had a lot less in the swords. And unfortunately, I don't have a bayonet to show you guys, but a bayonet was really the go-to. Can I borrow yours? Beautiful. So, this is the, the last piece of the puzzle here. So, obviously we carried a finite amount of rounds. After that, you're kind of screwed. Unless you have a bayonet and everyone, this was standard issue. So, a lot of people will look at this weapon and think that this is a sight. It is not. It is a bayonet post. It's called a stud. So, the bayonets, yeah, the officer would give the command fix bayonets, and that's pretty much when everyone ran out of ammo. And they have a locking mechanism like this. Um, the reason that it is off to the side like that is so if I have rounds, I can still load it. If not, you would bring the bayonet up and you'd actually hold it like this and now it's a spear. This was another one that they would tack you to a tree, unhook the bayonet and leave you. Uh, the Highlanders were, were, uh, were a brutal group of people to say the least. Um, so this, this transformed this weapon as opposed to just a firearm into now a firearm spear combo and they were brutal. To die from a bayonet wound was probably the worst way to go, and the reason for that... These have been since outlawed by the Geneva Convention, but this uh, tri-bladed design, so these would have all been sharpened. This cannot heal. You cannot heal from this wound. They can't patch it, they can't sew it, you can't fix it. So a lot of times they'd aim for the stomach, and once they did that you would die of sepsis in about three weeks, which is blood poisoning. Very, very brutal way to go. Um, so, in, and especially the Civil War, you saw a lot of bayoneting deaths. Um, the French loved the bayonet, the English not so much, because the English were smarter, if we're going to be honest here. Um, the, the French, they, they, they actually would um, affix bayonets, and then they would shout, tu, which is uh, die in French. And they would march, and they'd start very quietly, and it's actually quite profound when you see it done. But they, they'd start, and they go, tu, tu, tu. Two, 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 and then they start running, and then you're like, oh crap, we're gonna die by French people. Um, and and that's, that is certainly a scary thought. Uh, Highlanders would yell. The English just kind of had this thing that they go, bah! And it was really weird, and I don't understand it, and I cannot give you a reason as to why they did that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of the English. Um, but the idea behind the bayonet was it was not, it was a last ditch weapon, it was more of a, it was a terror weapon. To see a group of these guys rushing at you, spears out front, screaming, and they would, they'd ha! like that, and they'd run towards you, and they'd, and they'd get you, and that was game over for you. Um, that would scare people so much, they would turn on heel and run. They just, they were like, we're done, it's done, we're done, we're leaving. And so, um, and, uh, and that's actually how we turn a lot of battles, is with bayonet charges.
So that those are the three basic bladed implements of uh, of the colonial times. So the axe would have been carried especially by colonial troops. Everyone had one because we were surviving in the bush for the most part. But um, light infantry, so scouts, these were essentially the Green Beret of the times. You know, they were highly trained, they knew how to survive, they could usually speak some semblance of a Native American language, they could speak French, they could kill a rabbit with their bare hands. These guys were BA, for lack of a better term. So as a, as a show of why they were so hardcore, they would usually still wear their axe in, in, in combat. Now, personally, the axe is my favorite weapon. It's, there's just some special simplicity to, to, to axing someone to death. So, this is called a full bearded axe. This is the beard. Don't ask me, I don't know. Um, now, an axe like this could be thrown as a tomahawk, and it would, because of this design, it would whirl through the air and it would stick into someone, hopefully. The idea was if you stood, you would stand at a length of five paces, um, five paces from your target would get one spin out of an axe, most axes. So if I wanted to kill someone and I was ten paces away, I knew it would turn two times. Um, and people got very, very, very good at this. But if I'm not going to throw it, and most people wouldn't, you'd want to keep it on you. You'd run out of ammo, you'd kind of throw your gun down, you'd pull your axe out and you'd go, Aah! and you'd run right at people. And you would hit them in the head and they would fall down. Pretty simplistic. That's why I like it. There's no no nonsense, no fuss, no muss. Actually, there's a lot of there's a lot of this very messy weapon. Um, but yes, so the Native Americans taught us how to fight with axes specifically. They really loved them. They picked up on it, and they really taught us how to do it effectively. One of the favorite Native American things to do was to take scalps as war trophies, and this was their primary weapon of choice for that, or or a small knife, but usually the axe. So. They'd knock you down, hopefully kill you, and then they'd go to the top of your head and they'd go, bah! like that, and they'd take right here. Now in the Native American culture, that top braid, and this is a Native American haircut, this is called a scout block. This is where the seat of your intelligence is, this is, your, this is the important spot of the head, the top, the very crown of the head. So to take that from someone was a real F you, for lack of a better term. On top of that, um, they would also take fingers as trophies, um, especially this, the middle finger. And the reason for that is if I'm a native and I'm going to draw my bow, I can't do that anymore. So they, uh, they, they took a lot of trophies and, uh, and then we adopted that. And so um, there were a lot of scalps and fingers and toes and teeth taken and it, it's kind of messed up if you think about it now, but back then it was, haha, I won. So, I mean, you know, we were kind of a savage people. We don't like to think about that, but we were.